I have lost the count of the number of times that I have repeated this. People make their purchase decisions based on emotions and then justify it by logic. Economics may always be guided by supply and demand, but purchase decisions are always influenced by emotion. So let's understand how as a business owner, you are able to maximize your outcomes by understanding your client's emotions. So let's dive in. Fall in love with selling as you acquire the right mindset, selling style and sales process that helps you take your business solution to more prospects, potential clients and the world at large. If you are a women entrepreneur who is looking to get more sales, scale and sustainability in your business, you have reached the right place. I'm Roshni Baronia, your host for the show Ace the Sales, which is all about helping you bring your authentic and influential self to each sales conversation. Clients have very specific emotions that drive them in making their purchase decision. And you as a business owner or a seller have to match their emotions. As someone who is willing to serve them, it is important for you to understand the emotions that are invested in that particular sales interaction. And you will stand to gain a better outcome if you are able to leverage these emotions to your benefit. So let's understand how you are able to gauge the emotions which the client is going through and it is not rocket science you just have to pay attention to the kind of words they are saying whenever you are doing a discovery call at or that initial meeting or qualifying conversation with them you have to pay attention to the kind of words they are using which are laden by emotions so the feelings part of whatever they are saying and for that you have to practice active listening listen to the emotional buzzwords which they are using again and again it is not only about identifying their pain points but it is also about scanning the signs which will help you understand what actually is going through them at an emotional level what actually are the emotions which are triggering them and if you are able to address those emotions you will stand a better chance of a higher conversion in your sales conversation so let me first share a few questions which you can ask which will elicit this emotional sharing and then we will understand what are the emotions that usually clients have and how you can identify those emotions right so first up here are a few questions which you can ask in a discovery call which will elicit emotional sharing of your clients so you can ask things like what are your biggest challenges what hurdles you are facing while doing this project have you tried solving this problem in the past how long have you been thinking about making this purchase? What do you hope to get from this call? Where do you see yourself six months from now? So you see, during the initial conversation or even if when you are qualifying your prospects, asking these questions will help you understand the emotional buzzwords, listen to the emotional buzzwords and identify what is the particular feeling they are going through. Now that we know a little bit of the questions that you can ask, let's understand some of the typical client emotions which you have to feed into in order to appropriately leverage them in that particular sales process. So I'm today sharing five emotions which drive clients purchase decision. First is FOMO. Now, this might be an untapped reason for which your client makes the purchase. But here's the thing. People see others doing a lot of things and there is an undefined peer pressure that is working on their psychology. They too want to do things which other people are doing. Probably it is signing up for a course or going in for a training program or just trying to take up a service just because some of their friends or peers have utilized that service as well so they are just influenced by what other people are doing and probably it looks like it is working for them so they do want to jump into the wagon and uh, try it for themselves irrespective of whether that particular program product or service even fulfills their particular need or not now under this scenario someone else might tell you that you should make good use of this FOMO syndrome and make an easy buck for yourself but not me. I will not suggest that you should take advantage of such a situation because in this case people are usually disillusioned 
and as an entrepreneur your integrity and honesty comes first and foremost so it is your job to tell them clearly whether your program product or service is a right fit for them or not if you do not see that there is a right relevance for them it is your responsibility to tell them that it is not a right fit and probably show them the direction or suggest to them someone who will be a better fit for them or who can better serve them in a way which will help them more trust me if you can do this it takes guts i know but it will establish your credibility and trust in a much better way and that particular prospect will eventually come back to you when the time is right and when they are the right fit for you however in the other scenario if you feel that your service is relevant to them but they do not have a clear understanding of how it is going to help them they are just trying to take up that solution out of fomo but they don't really know what it is going to do for them then under this scenario it is again your responsibility to educate them and show them clearly what kind of results you will create for them only when they move out of the fear of missing out then they will be able to think clearly and make a confidence decision because otherwise you know what they will keep second guessing and doubting the work as you move along during the journey together and this will be such a burnout for you and such a bad experience for both of you so whenever you are facing a client who is triggered by fomo then you have to serve them with truth and clarity The second emotional driver for clients is frustration. Now people of course want their lives to be easier. They want to excel at whatever they are doing and everyone wants to simplify their life, business or relationships or whatever you are helping them with. And if there is something that is coming in the way of having it easy, they definitely want to fix it. Now whether this is something which they have have tried earlier and has not worked or they have spent a huge money but they did not get the result or probably they were too lazy themselves to actually take action and implement the learnings from whatever program product or service they have utilized in the past and now the process is so broken that it is coming in the way of them achieving their desired goals and now they have reached the enough is enough moment this is when you are able to amplify that emotion by asking relevant and probing questions which i have also shared in detail in episode 16 so you might go back and check to on it but the point is that you have to get deep with what is actually not working for them what was it which they tried and did not work and why it did not work now in their day to day what are they struggling with what are the ripple effects of that particular thing not working in the other areas of their life or business so you have to bring out a holistic perspective of what is not working for them and you can be definitely straight forward to ask them this why this is so important for you to solve it right now and once you start going to the root cause of the pain point they will start pouring themselves out sharing whatever is not working and then will be in a much better position they will be much more open to listening to your solution so whenever a client is approaching you out of frustration you serve them with probing questions and then presenting your solution third up is desire now this is one of the most beloved of all the emotions because all of us dream and desire for a better future better body better mind better soul better bank balance and all of us are driven by this aspiration and desire to be better of tomorrow than we are today and if that's what your client is looking for give them that visualization give them that picture of possibility what is possible for them what the future looks like for them when they make good use of your solution show them through examples and client stories the after effects of working with you and here you can use words like imagine opportunity enjoy or satisfy to paint a picture of the brighter future so whenever a client is coming to you with full of aspirations serve them with 
स्टोरी टेलिंग एंड पावर ऑफ पॉसिबिलिटीज नेक्स्ट अप इज ग्रीड नाउ दिस इज अ वेरी अनयूजल इमोशन दैट यू विल बी लिसनिंग हियर बिकॉज पीपल समटाइम्स अ वेरी कम्पेटेटिव इन नेचर दे जस्ट वॉन्ट टू डू अ पर्टिकुलर थिंग जस्ट सो दैट दे कैन बी बेटर ऑफ विथ सम वन एल्स इन कंपेरिजन टू सम वन एल्स एंड दिस इज द कम्पेटेटिव स्पिरिट दैट इज ड्राइविंग देम टू बाय दिस पर्टिकुलर सोल्यूशन दे माइट नॉट बी वॉन्टिंग टू हैव दैट बट दे एब्सोल्यूटली नीडेड बिकॉज Because they want to prove some point of theirs, they need to be the best. They are driven by the desire to improve or achieve or have a competitive advantage than other. Now, such a client needs a lot of affirmation and assertiveness from you. They need to hear from you that what they are looking for is already done. For example, if a woman comes up to you who is already in a very good shape, and then she asks that she still wants a tighter abs and a fit. a body then you have to give her the affirmation that yes you already are in a very good shape you are already having miss universe style body the only thing that we need to do are these one two three things so you give your solution in a way which does not negate or pulls down or demeans whatever they have done already you give them that feeling of accomplishment and then present your offer so here you are affirming and then selling and the biggest bomb drop is for the last which is control freaks yes there are some clients who will like to have the feeling of being in control of things they want to feel safe and secured at all times they want to be told that they are in good hands and they are working with the best so your credibility your brand building trustworthiness reputation all factor in here and they will be a great selling point for you they do not want you to mince with your words they do not like any surprises so make sure there are no hidden scope creeps additional clots that you think you will let them know at a later point of time no they have to be shared right now they have to have a very transparent communication and uh, because they want things which are in control they do not like surprises and they want to stay in focus any last minute changes is something which is not acceptable with them so here you can always share share your accolades your your client success stories your credentials your five star reviews your media mentions your authority building whatever knowledge statistics case studies reports or research papers you have done probably these are the things your certifications these are the things which will come handy here to gain the trust of such a person so here when you are dealing with a person who is a control freak you would like to use words like reliable results trusted secure these things will help you build trust with them and keep in mind this person expects you to make good on your claims so don't make promises that you cannot keep they do not like surprises and they will hold you up to your word so those were the five client emotions that i had to share with you today and you have to understand the fact that the buying process is an emotional experience not only for the client but you as the seller. as well so i have talked about taking charge of your emotions in the previous episodes so you might want to go back and listen to that as well so understanding your emotions and now from this episode you have understood the client's emotions and now if you put two and two together you will be able to maximize your outcomes in any sales conversation and expect to have positive outcomes from the discovery calls or the in person meetings that you are having with your prospect i hope this was useful for you and uh, let me know how you made good use of these tips today and tag me on instagram at asda says sharing your feedback or take away from today's episode Thank you so much for your tuning in today. It means a lot to me that you've taken out the time to spare to listen to this podcast episode. I hope I was able to provide some value to you. And if you had some learnings from today's episode, do consider leaving us a five star review or a rating on Apple iTunes. It will mean the world to me, and it will help me take this podcast to more and more people. And if you are planning to launch your podcast, you should definitely check out HubHopperStudio dot com because that's the place my 
my podcast is hosted and i am super thrilled and happy with the features and customer support they provide hubhopper is india's leading podcast creation platform it can be the perfect place from where you can share your voice to the entire world so go check out the link in the show notes and i will see you next week